am Francesca Ristalli, working as an interventional cardiologist in Florence. Uh, now we are here in PCR London Valves, together with Professor Messas, uh, who has recently had a, um, an important publication on The Lancet, and uh, a follow, followed by an editorial. Um, so, do you want to tell us something about this, this uh, new technology? Yeah, thank you for this invitation. Uh, so we are uh, speaking about a new non-invasive ultrasound therapy for aortic valve stenosis. So as we know, the, the regular therapy is uh, trans-aortic valve implantation, and uh, sometimes this, this extraordinary uh, technique of trans-aortic valve implantation has some uh, problem because of extensive calcification, and sometimes the result is not so good because patients are very sick and they are uh, recused by the heart team, or they refuse to have invasive uh, therapy, or they are too young, like BQS mid aortic valve, or they are not severe, like moderate aortic stenosis. So we think that there is a room for non-invasive technology that will have the uh, goal to improve the aortic valve opening. Yes, we have read that uh, this technique is uh, completely non-invasive, and um, quite safe because uh, the, there was no uh, sign of uh, cerebral damage or um, problems on other uh, organs. And uh, uh, just a quick question about the results because uh, we have seen that the, uh, mean, the, the decrease in mean gradient after the treatment is not so important, so high, so, yeah. so important as we could expect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we can explain this. So uh, first, as you say, it's completely uh, non-invasive. It was the first inhuman study. So the publication in Lancet was on the first 40 patients that has been done in the world, a part in France, Netherlands, and Serbia. So as you understand, they are very, very sick patients. The mean AVA was 0 0.5, and the mean gradient was 40. Why? Because half of them was low flow, low gradient. So it's clear that when you have low flow, low gradient, you don't have so much an improvement in mean gradient. But we got 10 to 15% increase by AVA, aortic valve area, and uh, we, don't have, we didn't have any side effect during the therapy. No CVA, no myocardial infarction, no life-threatening events. All the patients went out alive from this non-invasive therapy. We start in operating room and now we are doing this ambulatory. And uh, the first goal was the feasibility and safety because okay. they are compassionate. We were very lucky to have some significant, statistically significant e effect in AVA and even in mean gradient, but most importantly, because they are 85 years old mean, we got improvement in symptoma, in NYHA, in CalCCQ. So it's a first in human study. We are not moving, as you say, to improve the efficacy, but it was first to demonstrate the feasibility and safety on this very sick population. And the goal is to go from this very sick to less sick, to increase the energy and the, the power of the therapy to get better results in terms of efficacy. But we have to go through this compassionate patient to go now to uh, efficacy. And now, up to now, we already start a study for the CE Mark study, mm -hmm. and we did 60 patients more with less sick patients. We are not yet published this data. So up to now, uh, all over the world, we have 100 patients done on four countries, Germany, Netherlands, France, and Serbia. We follow up up to 24 months. Okay. And do you intend to associate this uh, kind of therapy with other aortic stenosis procedures? Yeah, for sure. We think that this place of this new technology, non-invasive technology, will be in complementary to TAVI, obviously. And we try perhaps to do this for patients, as we say, that where the results of TAVI are not so good to improve the outcome of uh, the TAVI, or in some younger population to avoid TAVI on TAVI, okay. and to delay the TAVI, and to get uh, only one TAVI. So we see this as a complement to TAVI in different indications and different populations. Well, very clear and a promising procedure, so thank you. Thank you.